thought of the name Malayan because one of the inspirations in the creation of the school was our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal, the pride of the Malay race who once walked this part of the country just a little over a century ago. Our mission is to be a global steeple of excellence in professional education and research. MCL is the number one private school in Calabar Zone. Our mission is to provide a learning environment that would transform our students into globally competitive professionals. To produce social wealth from the generation of new talents. Excellence, loyalty, teamwork, discipline, and urgency. These are our core values. To me, MCL is home. Malayan is not just the buildings, the grounds, or the facilities. More so, it is the people who comprise the institution. The smile of a student when he realizes that he just learned something. The embrace of friends without whom one cannot leave. The values we instill, excellence and virtue. MCL is home. MCL is home. MCL is home. I am Malayan. I am Malayan. I am Malay. I am Malay. I am Malay. Okay, good morning. Welcome to the Pangilar Bato, fifth or sixth uh, online session for uh, Viewpoints. Welcome po sa ating mga parents and new students. As promised, dun sa mga nauna po nating attendees, uh, we are hosting this session so that we can have a uh, deep dive and uh, walkthrough of Malayan Colleges Laguna's uh, learning management system, which is Blackboard Learn. So I am Professor James Ronald Messina. Ako po ay isa sa mga moderator and speaker nyo for this morning para dun sa mga naka-attend na in the previous sessions. Salamat po that you are once again with us to discuss flexible learning options under the new normal. So uh, kami po ay nag-organize nitong viewpoints because we want to reach out to the parents. We want to talk to the parents and the new students so that we can share uh, what MCL can offer as a brand of education under the new normal. So uh, ngayon po, uh, uh, check lang po ng ating schedule for enrollment. Uh, ongoing na po yung ating uh, enrollment. We are on open admissions. So wala na po tayong entrance exam dahil naihigyan po namin na we cannot administer the exams at this uh, time of the pandemic. So uh, sinasabi ko naman sa parents ever since na Yung atin pong uh, admissions exam ay diagnostic in character. So ang purpose po na ay mabigyan kami dito sa MCL ng baseline data. Kung ano po yung level para masukat namin kahit pa paano yung readiness ng new students to enter senior high school and college. So yung baseline data po na yon ay gagamitin namin so that we can improve our instructional program. So, hindi naman pwede na uh, yung education service that we are providing, laging kung ano lang yung naakala namin na tamang level o kung ano yung binibigay ng gobyerno na direction when it comes to senior high school and college. Napaka-importante po na we are talking to the parents, we are talking to students about the uh, about these uh, perspectives and issues 
so that uh, can be uh, what collaborative at meron po tayong mga makuwang information na makakatulong sa amin to improve our uh, instructional program. So we're very happy that we have 44 participants as of the moment at nadadagdagan pa po. So kung meron kayo na masyashare ng link through Facebook, please uh, feel free to do so. Pwede nyo po yung i-share sa inyong mga sa inyong mga Facebook friends para mas marami po yung mag-join sa atin uh, for this uh, section of viewpoints. So baka yung iba ay medyo naiinip na. May mga nagtatanong 10 minutes. Ayan. So, we are using Blackboard Collaborate. So, makikita nyo po dito ang uh, ginagamit namin na uh, learning management systems, uh, learning management system or LMS. So, Collaborate is a uh, paired feature or functionality of uh, Blackboard Learn. So, uh, makikita nyo po dito sa right side na inyong screen, nandyan yung mga comments, nandyan yung mga uh, messages ng ating mga members, ng ating mga participants. So, meron na tayong na-capture. Can you elaborate more on Blackboard Learning? I mean, how does it work? Most preferably po ba students need to use laptop, desktop, or just cellphone? So, maraming salamat po. Mag-send lang po kayo ng mga, ng mga, uh, mga messages nyo dito, questions niyo. Later on, pwede rin kayong mag, mag ano, doon, phone patch. So, uh, wala pong charges ito dahil internet base. So, uh, you may want to activate the microphone and your camera later para live po, ma-share ninyo yung inyong uh, questions. So, given that there's no more entrance exam, wala na rin bang incentive for the top 10 examinees to qualify for scholarship? Siyempre po, meron. So, ito po yung paulit-ulit yung sinasabi sa parents. Nakapost na po sa ating website yung enrollment guidelines. Pakibasa po, dahil medyo madetalye po yun. And uh, ako gusto gusto kong sumasagot ng mga ganyang tanong kasi yan po yung mga nag -e enroll Di ba po? So, check nyo po yung guidelines. Nakalagay po doon na mag-offer po tayo ng scholarship. Siguro ang pinanggagalingan dito ni Mother ay pinangako namin noong December, January na Akala ko ba ikakat off ninyo yung top 150 ng uh, examinees para doon natin malaman kung sino ang uh, uh, magkakwalify sa scholarship. So ngayon po sinisingil nila ako doon sa pangako na yon At yan po ay ibibigay namin. However, medyo meron lang po tayong konting adjustment sa rules because when we gave that procedure, wala pa pong pandemic, ang pinanggagalingan po namin doon at nang mag -e entrance exam, mag -e enroll we will just set the deadline which is I think April 28. Ang problema po, sana maunawaan natin, between March 16 to April 28, meron tayong mga hindi na nakapag-exam. So, ang sabi ng iba, eh, ba't hindi nyo nalang i-online yung mga hindi nakapag-exam between April, uh, March 14 to April uh, 28? Papayag po ba kayo na yung mga nag apply sa scholarship, may isang grupo nag-face-to-face actual exam May isang grupo nag-online. Pag lumabas yung result, lalabas yung mga nag-online, sila yung matataas ang source, sila yung nag-qualify sa scholarship. So, makasabihin nyo sa akin, ako, hindi ko duda ako dyan sa result na yan. Baka iba ang sumagot niyan while doing it online. So, obviously, hindi po level yung playing field. So, so, make it, so to make it level, of the same level, and to manage the expectations of everyone, we'll have the scholarship examination this coming July. So kung sino lang po yung interesadong kumuha ng apply ng scholarship, tatawagin po namin kayo for a face-to-face -face exam. At yan po ay uh, dito sa MCL, pag pwede nang mag-accommodate ng mga visitors, tawagin po namin kayo for the exam. Uh, so pare-parehas kayo dyan, pare-parehas ang conduct of the exam. Kung sino ang mag-top 50 dyan, sila po ang bibigyan ng scholarship. So, relatively same rules po. Medyo in-adjust lang natin ng konti yung procedures. And I hope the parents can uh, understand. So, wala po may kagustuhan yan. Gusto po namin rin yung pangako na yon Pero because of this uh, pandemic, yung ating enhanced community quarantine, we also need to do some adjustments. So, maraming salamat po sa nagtanong. Uh, nagpapasa na po ng uh, admission credentials ang ating mga sudyante through Blackburn. 
the last time I checked, we have close to 600 na yata na uh, new students who are submitting their requirements through uh, Blackboard Learn. So, yung hindi pa po nakakapasok sa Blackboard Learn, keep emailing us so that we can give you the credentials. So, bakit po ayaw ma-view yung credentials sa BBL? So, basically, ang credentials po ay login. Hindi po sa BBL yung kinuha sa website. So, uh, punta kayo sa website, nandun naman yung ating procedure, bibigyan kayo ng student number to enter Blackboard Learn. Sa Blackboard Learn po kayo magpapasa ng requirements. Pag may uh, difficulty, please email us at admissions at mcl.edu.ph so that we can attend to your uh, enrollment concerns. So, konting adjust lang po dahil talagang mahira po dahil tayo ay nasanay na pupunta na lang sa school, mag enroll magpapasa ng requirements Ngayon po online. So para lang po malinaw dahil medyo maraming tanong na rin. Number one, nakalagay po kasi sa guidelines, we will give the parents and the new students 10 days to process the enrollment. Medyo paumanhin po na medyo nag-cause ng panic yon sa mga ilan. Dahil akala nila yung 10 days nagsimula nung sila ay magpasa ng requirements. Hindi po. Take note po na pag nagpasa po kayo ng requirements, nire-review pa rin po yan namin. Nire-review pa rin po yan ng tao. So, wala pong robot, wala pong makina na nag-review niyan. Kami po yun, so it's manually done. So, we will give you an instruction kung pwede na po kayong magbayad plus the assessment of fees through Blackboard Learn din po yan. Kapag ka po natanggap niyo na yung notification na yan, tsaka lang po tayo magpa magbibilang ng 10 days. So, wag po tayo magpanik na ang 10 days ay nagsimula noong umpisang kayo ay magpasa. Hindi po. That's 10 days from the date, from the day that we sent you the notation that you can now uh, view your assessment of fees and you can pay through our offsite payment channels. So, ayun po. Uh, hopefully, I was able to uh, introduce po a uh, viewpoints sa inyo. Sabi ko nga, uh, viewpoints, gusto natin magtagpo-tagpo yung ating mga pananaw about education under the new normal. I do believe that the parents and the new students have a lot to say, have a lot to ask about uh, education under the new normal. Naiintindihan po namin yan, kaya po gusto namin kayong makausap. At gusto rin po namin sa pagtatapos nitong serya na to ng viewpoints, ay magkaroon tayo ng agreement, nagpanapanag po, nag-meet yung ating viewpoints so that we can look for win-win solutions as we play uh, as we uh, uh, play the game of education under the new normal so uh, maraming salamat po for joining mag-uumpisa na po tayo ng ating session as uh, promised our topic is about flexible learning options under the new normal and hopefully you can uh, have a walk through of blackboard learn as we uh, proceed with this uh, workshop so, ako po ay hindi nag-iisa for this uh, session. So, uh, ako po ay sasamahan ng one of my esteemed colleagues in the uh, faculty of Ka College of Arts and Science. Magkasama po kami nito sa napakaraming uh, teacher's training, napakadaming consultancy projects because we want to share the best practices of MCL to many other communities. And we have been talking to teachers, to principals, to facilitators of learning sharing the uh, limitless uh, values and uh, opportunities to uh, be lifelong learners. So ngayon po, uh, makakasama po natin ngayon ang uh, Director ng Malayan College Laguna's Office for Education, Content and Management Office. So uh, she is also the previous Director of the uh, Learning Environments and Innovations Office of Malayan Colleges Laguna. Siya rin po ay champion ng Blackboard Learn. So pag sinerge nyo po yung Blackboard Learn at Malayan Colleges Laguna, naka-attach na po doon yung pangalan niya. Dahil siya po ay isa sa mga awardees ng Blackboard Learn for being a champion in uh, using the learning management system uh, for uh, the delivery of instruction. So siya rin po ay kasama ng team ng Malayan Colleges Laguna na nagtitrain sa aming mga faculty members on how to effectively use the learning management system para po ma-adjust namin yung instructional delivery. Lalo na po ngayon na ang direksyon ay online learning. Ang direksyon natin ngayon ay 
mas maging flexible yung ating instructional delivery program. So siya po ay licensed chemist, pero mahal na mahal niya ang teaching. She was a graduate of the University of the Philippines, Los Baños for uh, uh, Bachelor of Science in Chemistry and uh, Master's Program also in uh, Agricultural Chemistry. And uh, she is a holder of the uh, uh, degree ayun, sa University of the Philippines, Los Baños and a graduate program in uh, South Korea. So without uh, further introduction po, mas makikilala na po siya as we go along with, the sex, uh, with this uh, session on flexible learning options for MCL. Join me in welcoming Professor Abigail Arodelas Angelia. Yeah. Clap po. Thank you Good very much. Good morning. Hi, everybody. Good morning, Sir James. Yeah, good morning. I'd like to check kung okay ang audio. Yeah, yeah. So far, okay naman po. So, uh, yung participants po natin, pwede may, may isa, dalawa, tatlo o lahat na raise hand if the audio is good. Yan. So, meron na. Ang dami na. So, uh, ayan. So, okay po. Okay po ang audio yeah. natin. Thank you very much. Ayan. We can start na po. Okay, Ma'am okay. Abby. So, uh, I think as I read the chat box and the feedback also from the previous sessions that we had with the parents, medyo sila ay merong excitement about the learning management system that we are using at Malayan Colleges Laguna, Amapua School. So, uh, I would like to ask if you can share with our participants a brief history of Blackboard Learn and our uh, the development of uh, online learning uh, at Malayan Colleges Laguna. So by the way, ito pong uh, LMS na to ay ginagamit ng lahat ng Mapua schools. So Malayan Colleges Laguna, Mapua University, yung aming pong parent institution, and Malayan Colleges Mindanao in Davao City. So uh, yun po, Ma'am Abi, medyo concerned sila about the experience of MCL in rolling out this uh, learning management system. So maybe you can uh, pick up the discussion from there. Yes, of course, Sir James. I know na kahit anong bagong tool, I think at, at first, at the beginning, it's always um, very scary to use it. And for parents and students who might not be familiar with using a learning management system, in their previous schools, I know that sometimes it causes a lot of fear. But Blackboard Learn is really easy to use. Um, one of the tools that we're using now is a Blackboard product. So let me shift my slide to our interface for Blackboard Collaborate. This is where you're at now. Um, Blackboard Collaborate is a web conferencing tool that allows teachers and students to meet at the same time online and have classes or sessions. So just to orient everybody, um, on the lower part middle, you can actually raise your hand. So I'm, I'm seeing some of our participants who are already raising their hand. So what we can do later is if you have a question, you can just raise your hand. And then we'll give you microphone options so that you can ask your questions live. Okay, Bayon? So I can also see your chat. So if you have questions, then you can also type that in the chat area. All right? So welcome to our students and parents. Um, this is the first time that we're doing an online walkthrough of Blackboard uh, learn and all the other educational technologies that we're using at MCL. We do this all the time um, and before, I mean prior, prior to COVID and uh, normally, ginagawa ito sa umpisa ng term for orientation. But this is the first time that we're doing it online. So I really hope that this will be helpful for all of you. Okay. Now, I also want to have a sense kung ano yung composition ng audience natin. Um, okay lang po ba if you're using a laptop, can you open a new tab and go to menti.com? Or for those of you who are using their um, phones, pwede rin po kayong mag-join dito sa menti poll natin. Um, you will be asked for a code once you get into menti.com and our code for this poll is 565624. So I hope you can join in on that. I'll show you the results in a little while once. So we have 
around four participants who have already typed in their answers to the question. Let me share that with you then. Ayan, yeah, Abby, sorry to interrupt you. So basically po, para ma ma-imagine nung ating mga participants. So ito po yung actual setup. Si Ma'am Abby yung teacher. So tayo po yung students. So yung uh, uh, interactivity na ginagawa ni Ma'am Abby, yung, mga, yung menti na yan, yung polling, lahat po yan available sa mga students so that you can have a, a glimpse of how interactive the uh, learning management system, which is Blackboard Learn, could actually give us in terms of the delivery of uh, classroom lectures and activities. Ayan. So makikita naman po natin sa screen yung mga uh, responses. Okay, so um, we have 14 participants have already answered our many poll. Maybe I'll give you a final number later. But a lot of you are MCL students. I think an equal number would be parents. Thank you all very much for attending today's session. Okay, so the gist of today's session is um, just a brief introduction of learning in the new normal. And within the presentation, I'll also share with you tools that, we're, that we are using for um, delivering instruction to our students. And then um, later on, we can have a Q&A. Or actually, you can interrupt me anytime. Just type in your questions, and then I'll try to answer the questions for you. Okay? So um, I'll be sharing some truths about um, flexible learning in the new normal. And we will start with the first one. Okay? So... Kahit na ayaw man natin sa online learning, o hindi, kahit gusto natin, or ayaw natin, kahit na mahina ang internet natin, kahit, sa Pilipinas, no, in general, um, we have weaker internet connection compared to the rest of Asia, for example. Online learning is here to stay. And let's move on to the next slide. The online learning is really one of our most important enablers. No? For many schools, it has been easier for many schools to bounce back, um, even in the midst of a pandemic, because of their capability to um, deliver instruction via blended or via online learning modes. And this is also especially true for schools that have already um, set up their physical and virtual infrastructure no, in uh, having, for example, a learning management system where teachers can put in all the content and just share them with the students so they can access it wherever they are. For, for those of us who are doing work from home, meron ba ditong mga parents na nag-work from home? Alam din natin that the internet is also an enabler for us. Mm, so we're able to work even though we're in the confines of our home. Um, government offices are also able to, you can also transact no, for, um, within uh, governments, within businesses. And for some individuals who have internet connection, it has also been an enabler for them. So ito rin yung reason kung bakit maraming mga sites, katulad ng Skillshare, Masterclass, even sites like Domestica, which is... Uh, site that originated from Spain, but it's basically an online art um, online art and digital arts class session. So maraming ganyan ngayon. And a lot of students have really taken advantage of these online classes in order to improve and better themselves. So gusto ko lang din i-clarify because marami rin nagtatanong, ano bang difference kapag blended, kapag hybrid, kapag online? So yung pinaka-familiar tayo, this is a continuum, this is a spectrum. Um, and the ones that we're most familiar with is the face-to-face -face, um, type of instruction delivery. So yung face-to-face -face po, ito yung sa mga references, this is commonly called the brick and mortar type. Uh, and this is usually, this is the traditional method. So nandun yung teacher sa loob ng classroom, all the students are in the classroom and they're doing doing the lecture and instruction together. Um, blended naman po, on the other hand, is a type of education where they maintain the number of face-to-face -face sessions, but they have a learning management system that allows them to share content and resources with the students. And so there seems to be a virtual classroom that's associated with the face-to-face -face classroom. 
um, starting 2014, when we adopted Blackboard Learn, all of the courses at MCL, I blended po. So now, magkakaroon, since no, nag-advance na tayo sa online learning, um, nagkakaroon din tayo ng iba pang options na i-convert natin yung ibang mga face-to-face -face sessions into online sessions. And that's what happens in a hybrid mode. So, uh, it really depends on the school kung anong preference nila. Ang hybrid ba ay if, if the class meets thrice a week, for example, one class is for face-to-face, -face, and then two classes are online, or they would want a 50-50 type of model. So notice that from F to F, face to face, going on to hybrid, tumataas yung engagement ng studyante sa online learning. Um, however, the last mode, the end of the spectrum, is fully online. May question si Hilmer <laughs> raised his hand. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have the, the online method basically provides all of the lectures and all of the materials uh, on the internet so that students can view it even if they don't come to class. Now, merong dalawang types yan. So, the synchronous type, yung ginagawa po natin ngayon is actually the synchronous type of online. So, all the teachers and the students are together. They have a scheduled um, time where they will meet. And if there are questions, just like what you have now, kung may questions kayo, pwede po kayong bigyan ng feedback kaagad ng instructor. The self-paced mode naman po is a, a little bit different in that it allows a little bit more flexibility because the students are able to select where, when, and how they take the course. And how fast, sorry, how fast they take the course. So for third term, ngayon po, we're actually in the middle of third term MCL. We are on a self-paced delivery. All the contents are available on the learning management system. And it really depends on the students when they would access the materials. It depends on them when they want to take the assessment. As long as um, at the end of a specific period, matapos nila yung requirements that are uh, in indicated in the course syllabus. So um, I think it's better for us to understand kung ano yung characteristics ng bawat type para din malaman natin why uh, an online mode, for example, uh, or a flexible online mode is uh, more applicable for us at this time of a global pandemic. Okay? So far, is everything clear? Are there questions? Yeah, mukhang okay naman. Okay, great. So, now that you know the spectrum of delivery modes, I think it would be nice to know from our parents and our students kung anong mode ang Gusto nila. Okay, so I'm opening the menti again. Can you see the question? All right, some of you have already voted. Let's wait for the rest. So menti, hindi naman po ba kayo nagkakaroon ng problem? I checked the menti site. Not able to reconnect. Ah, okay. I think you can open a new window or a new tab so that you can answer our menti question poll. Usually, ma'am, um, so I'm answering the question of Ma Madeline. If this will be the problem, um, in case they are, the students are experiencing uh, difficulties, no connecting. Actually, nagiging, nagiging problem talaga siya pag synchronous, katulad po nito. So, for example, one student is unable to connect but for some reason, low internet connection, or um, suddenly na putol, intermittent. Hindi talaga siya makakapagbigay ng ng feedback during that synchronous session. So those are one of the advantages kung asynchronous tayo or self-paced mode. Let me share with you the results for that poll. Okay, are you able to see this? Ayan. Wow. Okay. So ang consideration natin dito, mataas ang blended, right? And of course, the assumption is we could go back to class so that we could offer a blended mode of delivery. Since this is what we're really accustomed to at MCL, since all of our classes are blended. Wow, surprisingly, Sir James number two ang self-paced online. Okay? And to be to be honest, it's a little bit difficult no, if we're going to choose purely face-to-face, -face, walang learning management system, and all the instruction happens inside 
the classroom. So if if we cannot do this because of COVID-19, then um, you know it makes it a little bit difficult for us. Thank you very much for typing your answers. We have 51 participants and uh, around 17, 18 on Menti. So you can still type in your answers, but let's move on with the presentation. Hi, Ma'am Angelita. You can just go to another. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can go to another window in your laptop or on your phone, and then in your browser, just type menti.com. Our code is five six five six two four. So let me move forward. So yung una, online learning is in inevitable. The second is, and I think this is good news for a lot of you, flexible learning is student-centric. Okay, bakit ko naman nasabi that flexible learning is student-centric? In fact, um, yun nga yung premise ng flexible learning. No? Let's make all the options possible so that students are able to access despite in spite of their current conditions. So kahit mahina yung internet mo um, or strong, reliable yung internet connection mo, uh, pwede kang maka-access, pwede kang maka Punta dun sa resources, pwede mo siya mabasa, pwede ka makapagsagot ng assessments if it's flexible. Because you are provided um, longer periods for you to access the resources. Another is, yung mga considerations ng, napapansin nyo ba yun sa mga anak ninyo? Some, some of them are active in the morning, yung iba they prefer to work at night or to study midnight, iba madaling araw. So, pag flexible, you really don't have to attend to a specific class at a specific schedule because the teachers will provide you enough time to be able to answer the materials. Um, and it provides us a lot of, uh, no, a, a lot of options no? because um, students are able to go online Wala sila, hindi sila mababawasan ng score kapag hindi nila na-answeran yung isang material. Hindi ka tulad kapag, kunyari, may klase ka ng 7 a.m. You really have to be um, to be there at 7, right? And uh, attend, answer, kahit na hindi ka pa ready. Flexible learning also considers the moods of the students. Kung hindi pa siya game on at specific time, then... He can choose, the student will be able to choose kung ano yung preferred time niya para mag-engage sa class. Um, however, it's also important for learners to remember that because you have a lot of um, freedom under flexible learning, you also have to consider and remember that it is your responsibility, that learning is your responsibility, and that you need to be able to own and take charge of that learning so that you can advance with um, whatever course that you are taking. Okay? So, para sa mga self-regulated learners, madali yun kasi nagsiset sila ng specific time. Pero may mga estudyante din na medyo nahihirapan kapag flexible kasi it's also very difficult for them to juggle, you know, several things, several courses. Um, but I think it's easier for students to realize that it's their responsibility, you know, kapag iniiwan muna sila sandali and they just try a specific mode, um, a specific lesson uh, and then they they should be able to find that they can time themselves or they can measure kung ano yung progress nila sa isang specific course because it's a little bit more difficult for the teachers to monitor um kapag uh, kapag online na asynchronous kasi you're not there at the same time okay so earlier sir james asked us to talk about the evolution of of online learning at MCL. So MCL was um, MCL opened in 2007, and as early as 2009, we've already explored uh, an open source learning management system called Moodle, and this was when EMCL was born. So when EMCL started, there were um, there were a group of faculty members that were trained for this, and then from there, they were the ones who also trained other faculty members to use the learning management system. And Moodle provided us a great platform to learn more about uh, electronic learning, to learn more about blended courses. And in 2004, our partnership 2014, our partnership with Blackboard began. In 2017, we acquired Blackboard Collaborate, and we also acquired an important tool which we will discuss later, yung Wiley 
ebooks uh, ebook resources um and i'll show you later how to use this and i have prepared a small class for you uh, so that the parents can also log in to our blackboard site in 2019 we opened eflip and right now 2020 we're giving students more flexible online learning options okay because of the pandemic okay so and alam ko excited kayo dito ito po ang interface ng ating blackboard learn site so it's blackboard learn a lot of students call it bbl um so bbl bb bb learn and this is what you will see when you go onto that site so on the site students have their profile and they also have can you see this on the left let me try to maximize it okay all right on the left you can see there the courses that you're taking yung activity stream naman po this one okay this is where your children will be notified kapag merong bagong material bago quiz for example na nilagay si teacher dun sa course so every time there's something new the students get updated in the activity stream um another option is when students emails yung live emails nila are paired with their blackboard accounts what usually happens is when the teacher updates something on the course the students also get notified via email so for a particular term nakalagay po kung ano yung mga courses na tinitake ng anak ninyo. Okay? And then inside that course, you will see the, the materials that have been shared by the teacher. So there's also a calendar. In here, you can also see the messages that are sent. Pwedeng classmate to classmate, pwedeng teacher to, class, uh, teacher to student, and vice versa. And I think the most important part is this. Using Blackboard, the students also get updated real time kung ano yung mga scores na nakukuha nila sa graded assessments. Okay? Some of these are not available for the students like uh, tools for example um, because this is a teacher account. Okay, so th these are the other things that students are able to see on Blackboard. So yung course resources, course materials which I have already mentioned. On the right side, you can see a sample original course sa, sa ang blackboard po kasi ngayon what we've done is activate another mode which is the more modern interface mode which is called ultra but um some faculty members are using original some of them are using ultra the picture that you see on the right po is an original course so um if you can see in here on the on the left let me draw a line on he in here you can see um, a set of menus where, a set of items, sorry, where you have course announcements, messages, discussion boards. You can see the which um, which period or which week that those lessons uh, will be covered. Of course, kung self-paced yun, walang problema because the students should be able to go through all of these folders. Okay? So, an ano pang nakikita ng mga bata sa loob ng LEARN? Um, pwede na makita yung grades nila, yung course materials, pwede sila mag-take ng quizzes anytime, anytime they want. Kapag flexible yung, uh, pag flexible options, binibigyan po natin yung studyante ng opportunity na mag-answer uh, several times. No? Sometimes, kung, um, kung formative yung assessment, we could give unlimited attempts for the students to take a specific assessment. Um, sometimes the teachers would give two or three attempts in consideration of the possibility na baka po maputol yung se ano, session, yung connection, for example. So, pwede siya mag-attempt ng isa pa. Another is you provide, we provided access to ebooks. Students are able to read messages and announcements. And we've also put in some courses that will um, provide support for the students. So we, the, our CGC, Center for Guidance and Counseling, have placed their um, mental health course. There's also an interventions course from the student services. Uh, and our Learning Environments and Innovations Office have also placed a course on Blackboard tutorial. So if if hindi pa masyadong um, familiar yung student na gumamit ng Blackboard, they can also go to that Blackboard course site and view some materials, some resources. 
The picture that you see on the right naman po is for Ultra. So it's similar, a little bit different in design, but you can see that all the menu, all the items and the folders are still there in the course area. In here. And um, inside that module, you have, you can also see, sorry, you can also see the resources, okay, which is this one. Another important feature is we provided help at almost every area within the Blackboard Learn site. So all they need to do, all the students need to do is to just click on the E sign at the bottom of their page because one of the tools that we're using called EasySoft allows students to get hold of a video or a document in case may question sila dun sa isang um, feature or isang tool ni Blackboard. All right. Another important um, thing that we have to consider about on online learning, online delivery, is that high quality education, uh, high, co high quality educational content takes the cake. So it's very important that you provide resources um, that the students can use and can really provide higher engagement with your students. So for MCL, what we have done is pair up with several different content providers. Um, we have a very strong partnership with Coursera. And later on, I'll give you some of the features. So James, you just let me know if there is a particular question that I can answer. I've seen a lot of chats. Sorry, I missed that. Um, but if there are questions that you know I can answer right away, you just let me know. OK? Yeah, so far, I have a question. What is the standard Wi-Fi speed connection in order for students to have a continuous connection? Right. Um, that's a very good question. But what we have done with our courses is this. So may mga resources na pwede nilang ma-access even if they have the low internet connection, yung mga 1 gig, um, or 3G, 2G, 3G, pwede nilang ma-access yung PDF, yung text at saka announcements. Pag stronger yung internet connection nila, they would be able to access the videos um, and maybe stream some videos on YouTube kung merong mga YouTube resources na nilagay doon. Collaborate requires a little bit uh, higher bandwidth. Um, but what we've seen is at um, a 3 gig, 2 to 3 gig would be enough for us to be able to uh, open the Blackboard site, answer the tests, and view the resources. Okay, thank you. So, ano lang, uh, para lang dun sa mga parents na nag-join sa ating session ngayon. So, this is just a walkthrough po of Blackboard Learn. So, baka mamaya po, ang impression ninyo is information overload. So, there's a separate uh, orientation on Blackboard Learn that uh, all new students will to uh, attend, we'll have to uh, go through before we uh, open the academic year 2020-2021. So, kung meron po kayo mga kakilala na nag-enroll na sa MCL in the uh, previous years, ganun po talaga lagi, meron tayong summer camp for new students. So, ngayon po, matutuloy pa rin yun. It's such that we'll have it virtual learning session for uh, the students. So, wag po kayo mga mba na may information overload po sa kayon, kayo at sa kayo mga bata. Ito po ay, in a nutshell, we want to give you an idea on how Blackboard Learn works and online learning at MCL works. Para medyo meron kayong picture ng overview kung paano ba matututo yung anak nyo in the coming uh, uh, terms. So, yun po, I give you the assurance na hindi po ito yung orientation. Mas malawak po yun. And that's also the same reason why we are encouraging our parents and new students na mag-enroll na po agad so that we can uh, give your son or daughter an access already to the course dun sa uh, student orientation and uh, mga ganitong lessons for them para medyo mahaba-haba po yung time nila para sila ay mag-aral at ma-familiarize yung uh, Blackboard Learn at saka Blackboard Collaborate. Ayun po. That's so, uh, again, uh, thank you, Ma'am Abby. You may continue. Yeah, that's true, Sir James. No, I like what, I like what you've mentioned about um, being overwhelmed. Ang isa sa mga ginagawa din natin para hindi mo overwhelm is when we choose an educational tool, um, we make sure that it's something that seamlessly integrates with Blackboard. 
So, for example, yung Connect Resources po natin, which is a partner content um, from McGraw-Hill Publishing, it, it is embedded on Blackboard Learn so that um, there will just be a single sign-on when the students access the materials on McGraw-Hill. So, inside the Blackboard site, if you click lang nila yung link, the students will log in sa umpisa, and then after that, pwede na silang maka-connect dun sa mga resources on McGraw Hill that, that are being shared by the teachers. The same is true for Wiley. So it's already within the Blackboard environment. Um, another is in 2016, we also opened a program called the Blackboard Course Kernels. Ito naman po, the Course Kernels, we've decided to build our own learning resources. And uh, when we started, we wanted to make, to make animated learning videos and this was done in partnership with students and teachers so that teachers make the lesson and then the students um, provide the animated characters um, the audio and then they put it all together in one short learning material excuse me again yung mga nag-raise ng hand pwede ba natin ipapone in from time oh, sure. to time para at least they could sure. feel the uh, collaborative yeah, so learning environment. If they if they raise their hand, that means they have a question. Um, and yeah, I hope our team can know. help us. Yeah, I hope our team could help us uh, unmute their microphone. Okay. Para ma raise nila yung question. Thank you. So far, clear po tayo sa mga tools. Um, we've del already discussed Blackboard Collaborate. We've already covered Blackboard Learn. And then our partner content, this one I'm showing you what our um, Coursera interface looks like. So on Coursera, the students are able to take courses from top universities from all over the world. And if they finish that course, they also get the certificates from that school. So even those of, um, from the Ivy League schools, no, um, they could give our students children or students the certificate when they finish the course it also prepares our students to become um, global no, learners and a lot of the courses also helps prepare them for the workplace so right now my share ko lang, we have a partnership also with um, with how we have a program with our alumni and we've also provided Coursera access for MCL college alumni okay this one is connect in Connect naman po, it's also an integrated tool that allows students to read an ebook that has been chosen by the teacher and paired with the course. They can do practice activities on uh, this platform. And what we really like about this is that it's adaptive. So, for example, may, may namali na question si student. Um, the system will prompt and give it some more similar questions about that topic until ma master niya yung topic na yun. Uh, pag okay na siya dun, then the student can move on to a different topic within that chapter. Uh, it could be a timed learning session or it could also be a self-paced learning session that the students can start now. Pag pagod na siya, pwede niya balikan later on. So it helps students master and attain outcomes. Okay, ito. I think we have a demo for this. Um, assistants can help us go to the Wiley site, still on Blackboard. Um, but before that, I'll give you an overview what this is. So our partnership with Wiley allows students, MCL employees, to access the ebook library, which contains 12,000 titles. Um, when they borrow a book, pwede sila actually makahiram ng 20 books at one time. Kung naubos na nila yung 20 borrows, they can just return the book and then borrow another title. And it doesn't really matter kung sabay-sabay yung mga MCL students or MCL employees na mag-borrow ng book. Uh, it is it is it will be afforded by the system we are all allowed to borrow even if just you know, if it's just one title so what mia is doing is sharing with you the course and the ebook library so inside that ebook library you can see titles within uh, within the ebook site 
But on the upper right, Mia, I hope you can hear me. Can you um, put your cursor on find? And let's just search for one book. For example, math. Or statistics. Ano <laughs> ba gusto niyang isearch? Isearch lang doon sa window na yun. And then, um, all the titles related to that topic will be shown. And whatever the student likes to borrow, ang gagawin lang niya, i-click niya yung activate. So, nasa kanya na yun until July 31, 2020. Um, and... Kapag tapos na niyang basahin yung book na yun, pwede niya ulit i-return. Now, what's really nice about this is yung mga estudyante, minsan tamad silang magbasa ng libro. Meron din tong read aloud function. So, Ouch. it can convert it. Hey, sorry. Converted into an audio book. Uh, and pwede nila gawing pampatulog. <laughs> no, but um, I also really like this feature where teachers can take notes inside uh, an ebook that she has borrowed and then the, the teacher can enable sharing of notes with students so pwedeng malaman ng mga estudyante kung ano ba yung mga specific parts ng chapter that are important for for um, outcomes attainment okay so what mia has done is open a book on social media tactics. Wow, that's a nice one. Uh, and then when you click launch, Mia, it opens another tab. Okay, that's the vital source tab. So now you have access. Oh, I think it's your first time to do this. So unang beses, you will be asked to log in using your MCL email. Um, and then you can just move forward with opening and reading the book. What are the other features of the ebook? Um, medyo mahaba yan niya. <laughs> right? So, but it's just a one time thing. Ang isa pang feature na favorite ko is if students download an app on their phones called the Bookshelf app. I'm going to type that. Bookshelf. So, if you download that app, um, when you borrow the book from the site and save it on your bookshelf, kahit hindi na po kayo connected sa internet, pwede nyo mabasa yung libro. So that's great, right? Okay, let me just continue. So those are just one of the tools. We have okay, Blackboard, Coursera, Connect, Wiley. Okay, now let's move on to another Mentipole. Okay, I hope I, our parents and students can again go on to menti.com and answer our next question poll. Let me show that now. I hope you can see the question. Okay, wow, okay. So a lot of you think that Blackboard Learn will be useful for students. I agree. Ebook library, surprisingly, no, same number. Okay, Coursera, a lot of students like that as well. Wow, thank you very much for your answers. Thank you. We've had 16 participants in that poll. But six, parang mga 16, 17 ang very active sa polling question natin ngayon. Okay, so this brings us to the last um, characteristic, if you can call it that, um, of learning in the new normal. So, alam nyo ba kung bakit daw napaka um, hirap, no? Nahirapan tayo sa pagsupo ng SARS of two is uh, that it tends to evolve and mutate very quickly so that the medicines that have been designed to um, target it is having a hard time recognizing the surface molecules. It's very difficult to kill. Um, and I think this is a lesson that we can learn from. No? Kapag merong mga panahon na katulad nito, it's really uh, very important for us to learn how to adapt um, and shift our lens so that we can look at opportunities, uh, opportunities for growth and opportunities for improvement. And so what worked before may no longer work now. And um, us being more resilient and more accepting of the current solutions will um, help us uh, grow and see the opportunities now in our current situation. Okay, so there. 
Now, I think this is what all of you have been waiting for. It's 10.49, so we have enough time to do this. Again, I'd like you to open another web, another window, uh, and go to mcl.blackboard.com. So I've prepared 20 accounts for parents, uh, and your username is mclparent underscore zero one, and you also use the same password. But if the one doesn't work, you try two and three and so on. Kapag may nauna na sa inyo. So I hope you can go to mcl.blackboard.com and I'll walk you through the site. Thank you, Natalie. It's also on our chat area. Okay, if you ha you're having a hard time logging in, um, maybe you can try a different number. So what I've done for this course is prepare some folders that you can open and take a look at. So there are some resources and materials that are available there for you to try out. So may mga lessons on math, engineering, on science, and this helps us understand no, kung paano yung experience ng mga anak natin kapag pumapasok sila sa Blackboard Learning. Okay, and then while you're doing that, allow me to share my screen and join you in exploring that site. I hope you can see this. So this is what you will see. So try natin si, may nakaabot na ba ng MCL Parent 20? <laughs> If it's your first time to log in, I think somebody has already used this now because normally if it's your first time to log in, then there's a short tutorial that comes out. So um, this is what appears on the Blackboard Learn site. This is the My Institutions page. And notice that um, there are a couple of announcements. And on the left side, you should be able to see your course menu here. So, sa loob po ng courses, this is what you will see. Inside courses, you have, I've enrolled you into one course called BB Ultra New Students and Parents. And then you just click that. And you will see the materials. So, what we've done here is um, we have a menu on viewpoints. So I've shared the presentation that um, were that was used in the previous session in you with Sir James. So this is a type of material called SCORM. And when participants open this, you have a presentation. Actually, what what some teachers are doing is they add questions that are embedded within the presentation so that students can answer. It just takes a couple of um, seconds to load the material, lalo na kapag mas maraming photos yung material. It might take a little while. But you should be able to see that in there. Okay. So on this side, you can see the toggle and navigation buttons. So if the teacher has a PowerPoint presentation, then you can share that using Blackboard. Okay. Have you tried it? So I hope some of you are able to open the presentations and the videos. Okay. Another is to view some interactive learning resources. So just open the folder. Um, this one is another SCORM but more interactive. Because I've opened this yesterday, it, it has prompted me to start on that specific slide where I ended or kung gusto ko daw magsimula ulit. So this one, oh, ito, favorite ninyo, application of derivatives. So for this particular presentation, you can go to the next, go to the previous or the next slide here. But if there's an animation, because this is actually an embedded PowerPoint, if there's an animation, you can click on this toggle button here, this play button so that you can see the animation within the slide. Um, if it's too small for you, you can also maximize it using this. Uh, let me mark that. It's this one. So you can maximize. 
but you can still continue to play the presentation. All right, so it's step by step so that the students can easily follow. This is a lesson that's been prepared for us by um, one of our science, uh, senior high faculty members under mathematics. Okay. So you do, you can solve for the problem um, and the teacher has given the steps. Yes, sir. This one is video, right? So, not necessarily live ito na uh, makikita ng students. So, pwede niya itong i-download. Uh, yeah. For the score material, Sir James, it's actually interactive. So, hindi siya nagpa-play by itself. The teacher can... Uh, the student can navigate the material. So, kung matagal siya sa isang slide, okay lang, walang problem. Um, okay. They can download the PowerPoint presentation, yes. Sometimes okay, the so teachers share live. PDF version. Mm -mm. Yeah, kasi I, I was telling the parents previously na yun yung advantage ng may LMS kasi it serves as a depository of all the learning materials which uh, will help the self-paced learning kasi uh, kung kailan nila gustong balikan ng mga materials na doon sa LMS. That's true. And sometimes, what I like about the SCORM package is the teachers can check how many times a student opened that file and kung gano katagal siya nag-access uh, ng file na yon. So it's possible that the reason why it took longer for that student to finish that material is medyo nahirapan siya. So it's already a cue for the faculty members. Um, to reach out and help the students in case they have problems with a specific topic. Okay, let's try to look at the other resources. Okay, this one is another interactive material. Um, so it's a lesson, but it also poses as a game. And again, students can toggle through the slides. Okay, so you can interact and see and answer the question. So maybe if this is the wrong answer, then you can just go back. Okay. All right. There. So it makes it a little bit more interactive for the students. Um, and it also gives them feedback. No, what the teachers can do is insert slides kung bakit mali yung answer or it, they can also give them hints on how to get to the right answer. This is a wonderful interactive material. Okay, I know you wanted to look at the videos and see how the videos look like on Blackboard Learn. And let me just show you the last folder. Okay, so let's look at the micro learning assets. Uh, so there are two types of videos that are uploaded on Blackboard Learn. Videos that are hosted on YouTube um, but it's embedded within the Blackboard site. Uh, and these are also videos na um, pwede kasing mag-build yung mga lectures ng sarili ng videos and then they up it on YouTube either as a public, private, uh, public or unlisted video and then they can share the link on Blackboard Learn with their students. So this is an example of a biology lesson. Over here and with this video, I would like to show you how to pull up the simulation for our photosynthesis activity. So, just so our teacher is showing a simulation for photosynthesis, I think. Browser, and it should launch the simulation. No logins needed. So the good thing about the simulation is there are several ways. I hope you can hear the audio. Display. 
the information or the results ba, Sir James? of the simulation. Medyo mahina lang siya, pero narinig naman. There are also okay. options to toggle through the different environmental factors. So for example, as you can see, I'm toggling the temperature of the environment of the plant. And you will see the immediate effects of the changes in temperature to the oxygen level production of the plant. There are other environmental factors that you could draw goes through, for example, light intensity. All right. Um, and then if it's not hosted on YouTube, some teachers, when they make their own videos, um, pwede naman po sa Blackboard na the actual video is the one that's uploaded. So it doesn't have to be on YouTube. So this is an example. This was made by our former student, now our professor, Engineer Kevin Dugay. Next, electrical parameter which we will study is the electrical power. Electrical power P. I hope the audio P is clear. Is the rate at which energy is yes, absorbed or produced within a circuit. A source of energy, such as a voltage source, will produce or deliver power while the connected load absorbs it. Light bulbs and heaters, for example, absorb electrical power and convert it into either heat or light or both. So if you notice, it's um, very um, seamless. No, It easily plays within the Blackboard environment. And... If there's actually one tool that we're exploring now where you can insert multiple choice questions or review questions within the video so that the students can answer while they're watching the video. So the teachers can now walk the students through the problem or maybe the derivation of a particular, um, particular material or equation. For another variation of the power formula, we can replace the voltage representation from the original formula with current multiplied to resistance. Again, this was taken from Ohm's law. Okay. Right. I think some of our parents have questions. Is it okay if we give them microphone capability so that they can ask? Yes, they just need to raise their hand and uh, we'll uh, ah, okay. put them as presenters okay. so that they can, uh, ayan, si Leo. Okay, Leo, you may want to speak. Hi, Leo, good morning. Yan, Leo. Baka nakamute yung mic. Kindly turn on your microphone. It's found in the middle area beside the icon, yung yes. person icon. Yes, can you hear me now po? Yes, yes, yes. Here. Good morning. Yes, good morning everyone. Uh, uh, I'm a parent. Uh, I'm from Cavite but I'm working abro abroad currently. Uh, I have observed that uh, the online learning is heavy on videos and presentations. And my mm -hmm. question is, may we know what's your recommended minimum internet speed to be used by the students in the workstation so that we can prepare for it? Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, sir. Um, normally, it's not really all videos for a course, but it's true, no? There are courses that have uh, video resources. Um, video lectures from the teachers or videos that are from uh, sites on the internet that the teachers have shared. Uh, what we have seen po is um, a three gig, two to three gig connection would be enough. If we're just talking about um, accessing the Blackboard course site, no, because it's possible that the usage uh, is not solely um, for Blackboard alone. It's possible na marami pang ibang um, internet activities na ginagawa. So, uh, it might require higher bandwidth. However, what we have done with our courses is um, we have tried to put in uh, PDF text 
um, messages and files that the students can download so that if their internet um, bandwidth is low or they have weak internet connection, they could still download the files and still continue with their um, learning, with their studies. Yeah, so siguro yan po, yung 2 Mbps na connection, decent na yan kung uh, gagamitin sa online learning. So uh, parang yung meron pa ba ngayon na ano, mas mababa sa 2 Mbps na connection yung offer ng mga home internet uh, providers. So I think 2 Mbps yeah, for this, it's, it's already uh, decent enough for online learning. So, ang sinasabi ko nga po ay uh, maganda yan kasi the, the parents are very willing to make adjustments, di ba? So, as early as now, mahanap na ng magandang subscription. Or yung meron naman po kasi iba ang ginagawa. Talaga, yung, mga, yung mga sudyante namin ngayon, talagang natututog dumiskarte. Ang ginagawa po nila ay nag, naggagawa sila ng schedule when to download the course materials. Then, uh, yun, para hindi sila masyadong nakikisabay dun sa peak uh, hours ng internet. So, makikita nyo rin po dun sa mga videos. Ewan ko, napakita na yung may mga logo ng YouTube. Hindi po yan sa YouTube lang namin kinuha. So, we develop the material. Pinapa, nilaload lang namin sa, sa YouTube para at least hindi bumigat yung Blackboard Learn. And hindi magkaroon ng mas maraming problema yung mga bata in accessing the course materials. So, uh, the parents can be assured that all the learning materials are uh, proprietary, meaning kami po ang nag-develop niyan according to the uh, profile of our learners. And uh, nilaload po namin yan dun sa mga platforms na madaling makaka-access yung mga bata. So, uh, yun po. So, I think 2 Mbps is uh, fairly decent enough for online learning. Thank you, Paul. And Thank you. Also, uh, just to be sure, uh, is it uh, uh, 2 gigs or 2 Mbps? Thank you. Yung 2 Mbps, apa, 2 Mbps is, is the connection. Yung sinasabi ko yeah. ni Ma'am Abby na 2 gig or 3 gig, that's the data allocation. So, halimbawa po sa bahay, uh, parang yung 3 gig na data allocation na yun per day, kung mga dalawa ang gagamit, Di ba, kung mga dalawa ang gagamit sa bahay, parang ano lang po yun, sakto lang na kaya niya yung mga materials na yun. Hindi ko lang kasi hindi lang po ako familiar ngayon dun sa uh, data allocation na sinusunod sa mga bahay. Dati kasi the last time I subscribed with PLDT was 3 gig per day. Kaya meron, meron kami mga parents na nagsasabing, bakit ang mga teacher ninyo ay walang konsiderasyon? Hating gabi, nagpapapasa ng requirements. So, tinanong namin yung mga teacher, ano ba kating gabi ang deadline? Sabi ng mga teacher, hindi po. Actually, ano yun eh, four days bago nila ipasa. So, at their own pace, kung kailan nila gusto magpasa. Later on, we found out, yung pala ay uh, strategy ng bata. Kung bakit yung araw o hating gabi siya nagko-connect. Kasi number one, walang kalaban sa connection. So, mas mabilis yung internet connection sa gabi. Pangalawa, yung palang subscription po nila sa bahay, may data cap na 2 or 3 gig lang sa per day. So, pag pumatak ng 12.01, yung data allocation for the next day, buo. 3 gig na ulit. Kaya mabilis. So, yun yung mga fine prints na hindi natin nakikita dun sa ating mga subscription sa home internet uh, service providers. Pero, yun po. Kaya sabi namin, yung palakas na ng teacher. So, nag strategize yung bata kung bakit madaling araw niya diya download yung mga material. So, yun po, to answer the question, data allocation of 2 to 3 gig kung online learning at isa o dalawa lang po silang user sa bahay, that's, I think that's decent enough. Then, for the connection, it's 2 Mbps. Yeah. Usually naman din, Sir James, the, the, that, you, po, um, what you said was right, um, the teachers give a lot of time for the students to submit their materials. Um, I think yung mga ibang telcos then they have a one-month cap. So, minsan, pagdating sa dulo, since nauubos na yung allotment nila, dun na medyo bumabagal. But you're right, no? at the beginning of that allotment, usually it's a little bit faster. Opo. Ang good news pa dyan, uh, makikita nyo naman yan all, all, sa mga news ngayon, the Department of Education and CHED are making their appeals to the telcos to uh, make uh, uh, packages or plans for students 
So in fairness po sa mga telcos, meron po ngayon mga plan na lumalabas na yung mga giga, para mga something like that na per week. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. we surveyed some of our students. So, so far, nakaka-survive. Ito po ay ano to, real experience na ng mga studyante ngayon. Nakaka-survive sila doon lang sa mga subscription na hindi masyadong mataas ang cost. So, yun po, in terms of minimum, we can only provide the minimum po, yung, yung ibang mga nice to have. Depende na po yan sa, ano rin, sa capability ng parents to support. Pero, natutuwa po kami that the parents are very specific, uh, specifically concerned about these details. Kasi yan po ay hindi talaga walang, walang learning management system at walang online learning na magsasucceed. Kung ang lagi po nating problem ay access and connectivity. Ayun po. Thank you very much po kay Sir Leo. Yung mga videos din natin, Sir James, hindi natin sinset ng masyadong mahaba. Our recommendation for the teachers is between 2 to 10 minutes. 10 minutes mahaba na ngayon. Usually, they stick with 2, uh, two, two minutes to yeah. 6 minute videos. Actually po, we're, we're uh, training our teachers on the development of course materials. Kahapon nga, nagsushoot ako ng video, PowerPoint presentation for my uh, students. Uh, parang nilalagay ko lang siya dun sa 480 480p na setting para hindi masyadong matakaw sa data so kung mga ganun po yung course materials, ganun ka ba yung resolution pero klaro pa rin naman kasi powerpoint presentation naman yun with video, uh, accompanying video sa gilid so uh, okay na po yun so, parang isang video lecture na 15 to 20 minutes yung natapos ko kahapon parang wala pang 50 MB so, so, I think that's manageable na kung ida-download siya using the connection na hindi naman masyadong uh, uh, ma ma nagre-require ng mataas na bandwidth and uh, data connection speed. Yeah, thank you po. Um, another question is, for a copy of the presentation, we'll share the presentation that we have here on the uh, first folder. Um, on the course site. So all you need to do is log into the Blackboard site and then you can download the presentation. This is what our students are doing din po. If the teacher presents something and um, presents something in class, ang gagawin lang nila, i-up lang nila sa Blackboard para makuha ng mga studyante yung presentation. Uh, does it depend on the teacher whether it's self-paced or synchronous? Um, our experience for this term uh, is we've decided that across all co colleges and courses, at least for this term, po, it's, it is self-paced, asynchronous delivery for third term. So everybody, all the teachers are using self-paced mode. I hope that answers your question, Ma'am Wilma. Yes, thank you, Natalie. We'll also have a recording, sabi niya. So we have a recording and then we'll share that on our YouTube channel. Okay, other questions from our parents or students? So the first question is, what safety measures are in place to keep our children safe? And ayan po. So, ayan. So uh, to answer the first question po, uh, actually, in the previous viewpoints, I already shared uh, with the parents our uh, safety measures about uh, safe back to school when we open this August 17, 2020. So you may want to uh, take note of that. It's August 17, 2020 po. Uh, hopefully we can, can we share the slide dun sa part na yon. So, ang sinasabi naman po ng government, dependent said, grade 11 po yata yung anak ninyo, so it's dep ed. Uh, definitely, we'll have the opening of classes in August 24. That's for public schools. For MCL, a private school, is August 17. But do not think that we will have it, uh, we will open it, the usual face-to-face uh, -face, uh, classes. Kasi nga po, hindi naman nawawala pa si COVID-19. Ang sabi nga ng World Health, at least 18 months, meron pang sinasabi rin ng World Health din na baka maging part na siya ng society and the environment na para siyang flu. But the government is saying, kung ganoon, ano gagawin natin? Hindi na ba tayo mag-adjust? Hindi ba pwede mag-open yung classes? But still, let us follow the safety and health protocols. So lahat po ng pinaprescribe ng government, minsan OA pa nga po, ang mga private schools, social distancing, requirement ng face masks. On the administration side po ng mga classes, 
we'll have shifting classes. So, kung dati po ay 5 days a week, baka maging 2 or 3 days na lang yan. Yung kulang po na contact hours, kaya po pinapresent sa atin ni eh, Ma'am Abby yung Blackboard Learn para malaman po natin na yung 2 to 3 days na merong actual to face classes plus yung araw na wala ay pwedeng compensate ng Blackboard Learn. Na yung interactivity among the students and the, between the students and the teachers and the classmates also, kagaya yung ginagawa po natin ngayon na pwede kayong magtanong, pwede kayong mag-raise hand, literally virtual learning environment po yan. Literally virtual classroom po yan. Nagagawin lang natin through online because of the uh, precautionary measures against COVID-19. So, yung part po na yun, ma-assure po namin kayo, social distancing. If you have been to MCL in the past, we have very spacious lecture rooms. It can accommodate 40 to 45 students. But because we are adjusting to the new normal, we limit it to 20 to 25 students only per class. Magkakaroon tayo ng section, section B. Yung section A, papasok lang ng Monday, Wednesday. Yung B, papasok lang ng Tuesday, Thursday. So, yan po yung mga arrangements na we can do to follow the DepEd shifting of class schedules and to deploy alternative learning options on the case of in the case of MCL it's online learning so the, the reason why we are presenting it is po, para sa mabigyan ng kapanatagan sa mga magulang na we are we are capable we can deliver and kaisa niyo po kami dun sa worry niyo na ayan baka mapapano yung precautionary measures na yun po uh, sabi ko po uh, may, Nung bata pa tayo, meron kinukwento yung mga teacher natin ng elementary na yung isang magsasaka ay yung meron siyang dalawang anak. Yung isang anak, ang prayer, sana umulan kasi magsasaka din yung asawa niya, mabasa yung field. Yung isa namang anak niya, ang sabi sana raw kasi ang trabaho niya ay gumawa ng mga paso at banga. So pag umuulan, hindi matuyo yung mga paso at banga. And I'm sharing that anecdote, that, that old-fashioned story because Yun po yung posisyon ngayon ng school. So, uh, meron tayong isang grupo ng mga magulang na ang sinasabi, ayaw namin ng online kasi walang solusyon sa connectivity issues. Dapat pumasok ang mga mag-aaral kasi dyan matututo yan sa traditional setup. But on the other hand, we have a group of parents saying, ay hindi ko pwede palabasin yung anak ko pero gusto ko pa rin mag-aaral. Pwede bang fully online? And I think the, the bottom line of that discussion is about flexible learning options. And we at Malayan Colleges Amapua School would like to assure our stakeholders that those two learning environments are in place in our system. And the reason why we are sharing this to you, ayan, tungtua kami dyan na marami po kayo mga comments, because that will give us all the ideas on how we can improve the current system, the current current learning environments that we have. It's not a perfect system. It's not certainly what effective, sabi ng mga tao, sabi ko nga pa, ano ngayon, nasa pandemic tayo, ano pa ba ang certain? Everything is uncertain. What, what could be certain, I might be wrong, but we must continue. Hindi tayo pwedeng basta na lang ano, uh, maging uh, idle. So, yun po, we can assure you that we have these learning environments, we can deliver it. And yung mga feedbacks po ng mga ganyan, definitely, makakatulong po yan sa amin to improve, to improve those learning environments. So, second question, in short-term and medium-term plan, when is your schedule face-to-face -face classroom instruction? Kami pa yung nakaredy. Sabihin lang po ng DepEd at CHED na sa Tuesday, holiday yung Monday eh, Pwede nang mag face-to-face -face session. Ang teacher po namin ready, ang classroom ready, ang materials ready, ang eskwelahan po ready. So gusto yung naman pong sagutin yan, ang bola po ngayon ay nasa gobyerno kung kailan papayagan yung face-to-face -face class. So kung ang short term po na pinag-uusapan natin ay isang trimester, ang sagot po dyan ay flexible. Ano po ang papayagan ng gobyerno? Ready po tayo. Face-to-face -face, pwede, online pwede, hybrid pwede, blended pwede. So ready po tayo dyan. Ano po yung medium term? Baka ito po siguro yung one year. Baka ganun pa rin po, flexible pa kasi tayo ay ready. Yung long term po, yun po ang pinagpaplanuhan namin ngayon. Kasi po yan ang napaka-importante. Ibig sabihin, kung ang tingin lang natin sa learning ay para sa one semester or one school year, 
eh medyo malungkot po. Dapat po talaga ang tingin natin medyo buong program so that we can uh, strategize better. So, uh, yun po. So, yung long term po na yun, dahil ito nga normal na, hopefully, magkaroon ng vaccine, gusto po natin ibalik yung blended na kung saan face-to-face -face session and supported heavily by the online capability of Malayan Colleges Laguna through our LMS, which is Blackboard Learn. So, yun po. Sana po nasagot ko po yung tanong. Uh, my eldest is currently completing his third term in MCL and incoming freshman college. Uh, will his tuition fee be discounted? Opo, meron po tayong loyalty discount for graduates of grade 12. Uh, one son who is now completing credentials for MCL SHS. Salamat po. Meron po kayong dalawang discount na ma-avail. Loyalty discount for the senior high na pupunta sa MCL. At yung sibling discount po, check nyo po yung website kung qualified po kayo. Baka po may kulang formation na nabasa dito. May sibling discount po tayo and loyalty discount for graduates of uh, MCL Senior High School. Ayan po. So kung meron po tayong tanong about flexible learning options habang nandito po si Ma'am Abby, Pwede pong yun ang i-prioritize natin ngayon but I, I am committing that we will answer other procedural and administrative questions later. Yun po ang objective natin dito sa viewpoints. Meron ba tayong question sa yun more on the flexible? While we're waiting for the questions for James, there's uh, one more question also on Menti. So if they could go over and answer that question. But I think may mga questions pa about, um, so there's one here about requirements for enrollment. Yes, maganda yan, yung mga questions about enrollment. Okay, while our parents are typing their questions, let me show you the last question on Menti. So, shall yung mga tanong natin eh. Ano na, payment na eh. <laughs> can we use credit card? Definitely yes po. You can use credit card, pero gagamitin nyo pa rin po yung gateway ng Paymaya. Gusto yun man po namin na tanggapin kayo dito sa office. Under the Modified Enhanced Community Quarantine, malinaw pong sinasabi doon that school premises must remain closed. So ito po ay para doon sa mga posibleng visitors sa school. Kaya po ipinagbabawal po na mag-open yung schools for transactions. So tumatangga po kami ng credit card dito, yung payment dito. Kaya lang dahil nga po modified ECQ pa tayo, hindi po Pa, hindi pa po kayo papapasukin. So, kung may credit card na rin po kayo, mas madali po na i-download nyo na rin yung Paymaya app kasi under Paymaya po, basta merong MasterCard or Visa logo yung inyong card. Debit card, credit card, ta cash card. Basta may MasterCard or Visa, pwede nyo pong gamitin yan sa Paymaya. Alam ko pa, mahirap po yan kung hindi tayo komportable dun sa ganong sistema. Pero bagi po kasi yan ng new normal. Ako man po, gustuhin ko po yung nagbabayad ng aktual, may resibo, nakakausap yung kahera, nakakapagkwento minsan ng mga feedback dun sa mga frontliners namin. Gusto po namin yan. Kaya lang meron po tayo mga mabibigat na restrictions ngayon na kailangang sundin. So malaking tulong po kung makakapag-adjust po tayo dun sa new normal by exploring these uh, ways to do cashless transactions. Ayan po. By end of June, pwede na po ba mag-walk-in enrollment? Sana po kung papayagan na po yan ang gobyerno. Okay, kaya lang uh, sabi ko nga po ay ano po ba ang difference ng walk-in enrollment sa remote enrollment? Diba? So sa ngayon po, para wala po kami nakikitang difference, so baka po pwedeng uh, doon na lang muna po tayo sa remote enrollment. Kasi po, 
Kaya po pinapanatili ng gobyerno na sarado yung mga establishment kasi ayaw nilang maging dahilan ng mga tao to para lumabas ng bahay. So makikipagbabag pa kayo dun sa barangay, sa mga frontliners dahil sasabihin nyo, kapupunta kayo kay Sir James, mag-e-enroll kayo. So makakadahilan pa po kayo. Kaya rin ang IATF, sarado ang mga schools uh, under the enhanced, uh, modified enhanced community quarantine. So, bigyan po natin ng chance yung ating mga remote procedures. Sa so, umpisa lang po, medyo mahirap. Pero I am sure makakapag-adjust po tayo later. Payak website is still idle. Katext ko po yung executive director ng Payak. Lagi ko pong tinatanong kung kailan mag-open. Kaya lang ang Payak po para sa kaalaman ng lahat. Hindi po ako spokesperson ng Payak. Pero ito po ay dahil na rin sa aking kaalaman sa tungkol sa proseso. Ang PEAC po ay contracted lamang din ng gobyerno para mag-manage ng voucher system. So pag wala pong go-signal ang DepEd na open na yung uh, processing ng vouchers, hindi po magbubukas ang PEAC. Nung isang taon po, nagbukas yan, June 6, 2019. Medyo late po talaga, so hintay-hintay po tayo. Gusto rin man po namin buksan yan, hindi po namin mabubuksan kasi nakadepende po yan sa gobyerno. So, ano ang gagawin, sir? Mag-enroll na kami kahit na wala pang payak voucher, senior high school voucher, opo. Kasi po, hindi naman po 100% ng tuition fee makocover ng payak voucher. So, maglalabas din po tayo ng konting halaga. Baka po pwedeng iuna na natin yon pag lumabas yung online voucher, kung qualified naman po kayo, i-apply din yun dun sa assessment of fees. Kung installment, yung balance, i-apply natin yung value ng voucher. Kapag ka naman kayo ay full payment, after ilesyong yung value ng voucher, isusoli po namin through refund yung inyong binayad. So, maraming maraming salamat po sa mga tanong na yun. Maraming po nagsasabi, hindi nyo ba kami tutulungan sa voucher? Gusto po namin kayo tutulungan. Kung pwede lang pong mag-rally dun sa harap ng payak, para hawak ko na yung inyong qualified voucher recipient certificate, ay gagawin po namin. Kaya lang po, ang pag apply ng voucher ay personal. So, may mga personal information po na hinihingi sa pay portal na kayo lang po ang makakasagot. Hindi naman po pwedeng kuhanin ng MCL yan. At yung confirmation po ng QBR, yung qualified voucher recipient certificate, ay sa email nyo po babagsak. Hindi po pwedeng email ng MCL. So, ang pangunawa po sana ng mga magulang sa bagay na yan, gusto po namin kayong tulungan, pero talagang meron po tayong limitation sa bagay na yan. Kanya-kanyang apply po tayo. Maybe what we can do is always remind you, i-like nyo po yung MCL Admissions Office page sa Facebook. Kasi nagpo-post po kami dyan ng updates. Pagbukas na yung Payak website, nilalagay namin yung link para makapag-apply po kayo. So, ayan po yung tulong namin na mabibigay sa mga parents at sa mga appans ng voucher. So, maraming salamat po. Yan. So, meron pa ba tayong mga questions? Maybe admissions team, Mia, Pearl, you can go voiceover also. On voiceover, the some, some of the questions na nalampasan ko. Para masagot natin. Ma'am Abby, may dadagdag ka pa? I'm good, Sir James. Just in case lang they have questions about the LMS, about our tools um, that they forgot to answer uh, to, to ask today, the email is learningopportunities at mcl.edu.ph. So I've also written that on the chat in case you want to reach out and ask your questions about the LMS. Ayan. So... Uh, to, thank you very much, Professor uh, Abigail Joy Rodelas Angelia, for sharing uh, your expertise about uh, learning environments and for tweaking it in a more focused manner to talk about uh, flexible learning options for uh, Malayan colleges Laguna under the new normal. So, uh, nakita naman po natin dun sa walkthrough na we are trying to bring the actual classroom learning experience online and uh, in so doing definitely marami pong adjustments na kailangan gawin mahirap kasi hindi naman ito yung nakagis na natin na sistema pero ito po kasi yung new normal 
Ito po kasi yung uh, haharapin natin na uh, medyo wala tayong control sa bagay na yon. So, ang sabi nga, dapat siguro ngayon medyo nakaka-acquire na tayo ng tinatawag na pandemic and disaster mindset which is sa mga panahon ganito, bagamat tendency na natin ang maghanap ng napakaraming bagay ay kailangan nating mag-adjust, kailangan nating i-calibrate yung ating expectations to make things work and uh, for us to get the maximum benefit in all these available options for us. And in so doing, may adjustments yung parents na kailangan gawin. Sabi ko nga, yung connectivity issues ng internet, 10, 20 years ago, issue na yan. Nung panahon ni President Gloria Macapagal-Arroyo, yung computerization program, hindi na yan nag-fly. Kasi yung mga teachers, yung mga principals, medyo apprehensive sila on the use of e-learning. Dahil wala na daw internet, may na daw internet, no, no child left behind. 20 years ago, sinasabi na po yan, hanggang ngayon, sinasabi pa rin yung mga ganyang issues na yan. Kasi yung mga tao na dapat nag-adjust at gumawa ng kanilang share in the shared responsibility, eh medyo kinalimutan po yung panahon na yun at ang sinise, yung mga kakulangan ng learning management system, kakulangan ng internet, kakulangan sa napakaraming bagay. Eh ngayon po, yung mga bagay na hindi natin binigyan ng chance 20 years ago, eto na po ngayon yung new normal. So, wala po akong sinisisi. Ako po ay pwedeng mali, pero ang gusto ko lang po sabihin ay bigyan po natin ng chance yung online learning. Definitely, there will be a lot of challenges. It's not a perfect system, but we are trying to improve at the end of the day. What is important is that we realize that it's a shared responsibility of everybody. Yung mga sudyante, adjust kung paano matututo. Yung mga skwelahan, adjust kung paano mas magiging interactive at mag-reach out sa mga sudyante. Paano magiging flexible yung learning programs and learning activities. Yung mga parents, mag adjust din in terms of ayan, pagpo-provide ng support, internet, subscription, uh, pagbawas ng konti ng mga household chores dahil may online learning na nagaganap. mag adjust din ang baon ng mga bata o baka wala ng baon. Para malalo tayong happy, pati po ang school, mag adjust din ng fees. So may nagtanong po kanina, ano po ang adjustment sa fees ng students? Baka mas mahal. Sabi ko nga, itong Blackboard Learn na to, we have been using this since 2016. Binabayaran po namin yan every year. Medyo hindi po ganun kamura ang bayad dyan. But we are investing on that facility because we want to uh, provide the infrastructure needed to support online learning for our students. And since we will be shifting class schedules, we will also be adjusting some components of the miscellaneous fees and the laboratories for our new students. So, bababa po ng konti yung tuition fee natin. Plus, sabi ko nga sa comment kanina, last December, we decided to apply for an increase in tuition fee for academic year 2020-2021. But I think this is not the best time for that. This is not the proper timing. We do not have the proper timing to increase tuition because of the pandemic. So, ayan po ang good news ngayon. Adjusted fees and second, wala po tayong tuition fee increase for a academic year 2020-2021. Ayan. So, good news po yan para sa parents. So, what if in the next month, Laguna will be on GCQ? Can we transact payment in your school? What if, yes, we'll be happy that Laguna will be on GCQ? But then again, under the GCQ, school premises will remain closed. Ayan po. So, uh, new normal po tayo. So, uh, adjust po tayo pagdating sa bagay na yan. Baka po may pwedeng gawin so that we can be comfortable with the online payments and transactions. Ayan. So, thank you, Ma'am Abby, for joining us. Baka may mga pahabol kayong questions. Tawagan nyo po, i-text, i-message yung inyong mga friends to join us in this uh, learning session again. Uh, viewpoints about flexible learning options next Saturday, that's May 30. So, Ma'am Abby will also be joining us in the session so that we can have a walkthrough of our discussions on flexible learning options for Malayan Colleges Laguna and for your children once na sila po ay nag-enroll na. Meron ba tayong ibang questions? Para may mga nakikita kong new chat messages. 
Can someone do the voice over para yung mga na miss out namin ay matanong? Paano po yung ibang requirements for enrollment? Good moral report card. Di po ba pwedeng di po pa po pwedeng makuha sa dating school. Pakibasa po natin yung guidelines. Clearly po, sinabi po natin na tayo ay open admissions. Walang entrance exam. We are also relaxing some policies and procedures about the requirements, the documentary requirements of new enrollees. Yan po ay malinaw din na nakasaad sa Department of Education Memorandum titled Basic Education Enrollment Policy issued in 2018. Makaka-enroll po yung inyong mga anak ng walang o kulang-kulang yung documentary requirements. Basta po kayo ay magpasa ng affidavit of undertaking at kayo ay nangangako na ipapasa yan once available. So, nasa guidelines po yan, naglagay yung pong affidavit of undertaking na yan, may form po yan na pinrovide namin once na sila ay makapasok sa enrollment, online submission of documents through Blackboard Learn, nandun po yung mga templates na kailangan. Ang pagpasa din po nun ay online. So medyo madetalyo po kasi yan, kaya hindi ko po madiscuss ng one by one dito. Bukod doon, baka lalo kayong malito. So malinaw, para po mas malinaw po, basahin niyo po yung guidelines. At kung meron pa po kayong katanungan, despite the enumeration of the procedures in the guidelines, feel free po to call our numbers. Pwede nating i-flash ba dito, Mia, yung ating mga contact numbers? Gusto ko nga po sagutin ang mga tawag ninyo sa landline, ay wala pong sasagot ng telepono dahil lahat po ng offices natin ay sarado. So tawagan na lang po natin yung ating mga enrollment hotlines. We have Globe, we have Smart, Kapag ka medyo madetalye po yung tanong, mas maganda po siguro i-email nyo kami and uh, we are attending to your uh, concerns immediately. So in the past po, parang ang response rate namin sa text, sa, uh, sa email po at saka sa Facebook ay mga one hour na reply na namin. Ngayon po siguro medyo nagtagal ng konti, one and a half hours na. So kasi madami nag inquire Pero yung po ang assurance na gusto namin ibigay sa inyo para uh, assurance na yung mga concerns nyo po ay nahahandle properly at sana po uh, mag-cooperate po tayo dito sa remote enrollment procedure na to. Sabi ko nga po, yung nagtatanong na pwede bang face-to-face -face enrollment, pumunta dyan, walk-in, mas gusto nga po namin yon magkarap tayo, pasan nyo yung dokumento, re-review na, enroll kayo diretso. Mas madali po yun. Kaya lang po, hindi nga po pwede because of the restrictions set by the government. So, let us give remote enrollment and also online learning a chance. And uh, magiging familiar po tayo dyan. And uh, sabi ko nga, that's part of the new normal. I think this is the best time for us to uh, make ourselves comfortable with that. Yan. So, ulitin ko lang po. Ngayon po tayo ay nasa online submission of documents. Online submission of documents. Sabi ko nga kanina, pag nagpasa po kayo ng documents, i-review po namin yan manually. Tao pa rin po. Hindi naman robot ang mag-i-review ng mga dokumento. And that will take time. Ngayon po, para ma-manage natin ang expectation, bigyan niyo po kami hanggang June 1, to review your documents and by June 1, bibigyan na po namin kayo ng notification kung kayo po ay pwede nang magbayad. Dalawa yon notification na magbayad and second, yung assessment of fees. June 1 po, o yan na po ang ating malinaw na date para po hindi tayo nag-expect. June 1, hintayin po natin yung assessment and instruction for payment. So between today and June 1, Aayusin po namin, nire-reviewin po namin yung mga dokumento ninyo. Kasi ganyan naman po, hindi naman po tayo basta-basta makakapag-enroll ng walang mga dokumentong nire-review. Okay, eh sir, sabi nyo, affidavit of undertaking, ganun din po. Meron din po mga regions yan na kailangan namin i-check yung inyong mga submission, yung mga pirma. 
Okay? Ang pinakamahalaga po dyan sa lahat, para lang po maintindihan natin, ang report card po ay kinokolekta ng eskwelahan dahil ito po ay patunay na yung bata ay graduate ng senior high school or junior high school. Ngayon, kung wala po kayong report card, sabi natin, papayagan namin kayo mag-enroll, pero temporary enrollment ang mangyayari sa inyo. So, tinatanggap po kayo ng walang katiyakan kung talagang kayo ay graduate ng high school. Kaya mahirap po yun. May mga po na kailangan namin tawagan yung mga pinanggalingan ninyong school para matiyak na kayo ay candidate for graduation. Kasi magkakaproblema po kayo at kami. Pag nai-enroll po kayo later sa learner information system ng DepEd, tapos biglang hindi pala kayo graduate o meron pala kayong accountabilities doon sa dati niyong skwelahan. So, mag-cooperate po tayo doon sa proseso na yon Give us until June 1 to process your documents. And by that time po, ang tagal pa naman ng pasukan, August 17 pa naman. June 1, hopefully po, makapagbigay na kami sa inyo ng mga uh, updates kung kailan, paano kayo magbabayad at kung magkano ang inyong babayaran. Okay po. Kai, we have ano po, questions? You may want uh, to... Sir, uh, yes. Sir, one question po. Will the next school year be a tri-semestral term? Tri-sem tri po tayo sa college. Okay? Tri-sem po tayo sa college. Yung senior high school po for the longest time then it's trimestral. But we have a pending application before the Department of Education to shift the senior high school to semestral. Pero kagaya po nang sabi ko, ito po ay pending pa lang. Hinihintay po namin yung official communication from the Regional Office of the Department of Education saying that we can proceed with our with our uh, semester program for senior high school. Pero kami po ay nakaredy. Nakaredy po kami na i-ship ito sa semestral for the upcoming school year. Hinihintay lang po yung official announcement kaya hindi po namin pinopost. Pero you can get it from me now the advanced information that we are shifting the senior high school to semestral. Bakit kayo nagsesemestral, Sir James? Palpak ba ang trimester sa senior high? Hindi po. Hindi po namin sinasabing palpak. It's such that we are the only trimestral senior high school program in the entire Philippines. <laughs> Kami lang po. Ang ating pong passing rate, sa top four universities, pag graduate ng senior high school sa MCL ay napakataas compared sa national passing. Marami pong skwela, ang skwelahan na nagsasabi na ay okay yung graduate ng senior high ninyo. Bagamat lumipat sa ibang school pero sila po ay nagiging successful doon. And we can partially attribute that to the design of the curriculum which is basically trimestral. Pero mag nakakaproblem po kasi yung mga students lalo na yung nagmo-move in between, papasok sa MCL, maglilip of absence, babalik. Minsan naman, lumilipat sa ibang skwelahan, pinapayagan namin yon kasi alam naman namin babalik din. So, bumabalik sa amin. Pagbalik sa amin, gulo-gulo na uli yung curriculum kasi yung pinanggalingan ay semestral. So, para po, ito po ay hindi decision ng MCL na para sa MCL na para, ano, para umayos or something. Hindi po ganon. Ito po ay still student-centered para po mas maging madali sa mga estudyante at sa mga magulang yung documentation. Kaya po kinokonong namin siya sa semestral. But you can always be assured that the brand of Mapua Education, the brand of MCL Education will still be present regardless if it is trimester or semestral. Kasi yung content po nun, yung expertise in the delivery of the instructional program, will remain the same na bago lang po yung ating clustering, yung ating timing. Pero parehas din po ang flavor. Para yung ice cream. So, kahit ilagay mo man yan sa mag, sa tasa, o sa tapa, parehas din po siyang ice cream. Parehas din yung lasa niya. Nag-iba lang siya ng container. So, uh, yun po. So, uh, semestral po ang ating application. Hopefully, we can have that. Naabot po kasi yan ng lockdown. Kaya hindi lumabas yung dokumento. Okay, we have other concerns. We are flashing our contact information. Again, we are discouraging 
uh, inquiries via our telephone lines, the landline, di po yan masasagot. So, tawag po tayo sa mga mobile phones and through email. Yung 75,000 na tuition fee senior high school, good for one year na. Opo, good for one year na po yan. Mukhang medyo maraming pera yung nagtatanong ha. Ano kaya, namumurahan ba siya dun sa 75,000 o mura po? Ayan. Other questions, Kai? Sir, next question po. Does it depend on the teacher whether the self-paced or synchronous system is used? Kai, that was ano already ba? answered right here. Uh -huh. So Nasagot next po. Na yes, Sir James. Sir, next po. Paano po kung yung strand na nilagay nung nag-entrance exam ay ADM pero nagbago na po isip? Pwede po ba magpalit ng strand kapag nagpa-pre-enrollment survey? Yes, walang forever. Walang forever. So, alam po namin na nagbabago ng isip. Misa nga, naka-enroll na eh. Nag-aaral na nga eh. Gagraduate na nga, nagsiship pa eh. So, nangyayari po yan. Meron po tayong proseso dyan. Pero maganda po maitama yan bago mag-enroll. So, may, pag may mga ganyang concerns po, nag-pre-enrollment survey na, nakapagpasa na ng requirement sa Blackboard Learn. Pag ang estudyante po ay nakapasok na sa Blackboard Learn, siya po ay naka-enroll na sa course ng Enrollment Management System. Meron pong naka-assign ka na Enrollment Advisor. Ang trabaho po ng Enrollment Advisor, bukod sa mag-verify ng mga dokumento, i-assist yung estudyante. So, 100% assistance po ang pwede namin ipangako sa inyo pagpasok sa Blackboard Learn. Kaya nga ang sabi ko, magpumasok kayo sa Blackboard Learn, magpasa na kayo ng documents so that we can review it, we can assist you properly. Yung mga concerns about changing the program, kalituhan sa enrollment procedure, ano pa, confusion, uh, concern about payment, so on and so forth. Course message nyo po, yung enrollment advisor ninyo. Makikita nyo po yan sa Blackboard Learn course message. You may send a course message to your enrollment advisor at igagaid po nila kayo sa proseso. Pati po yung pagpapalit ng program o strand na pinili nila during the pre-enrollment survey. Huwag lang po natin gawing libangan na baka mamaya yung WF, ito yung gustong program. Pag TTHS, iba, iba, iba. Magugulo po ang enrollment procedure. Bukod po doon ay baka banda muli, patay parehas na tayong lito kung ano ba talaga ang program ninyo. Biglang pagating ng graduation, ibang diploma binibigay sa inyo. Ang saklap noon, dalawang taong kang pumasok sa klase, hindi mo alam na hindi yun yung program mo. Iba-ibang subjects yung nakukuha mo. So, simulan po natin ang malinis at maayos ang academic year. At ito po ay gagawin natin pa mamagitan ng uh, maayos na decision during the enrollment. And our enrollment advisors are committed to assist every new enrollee and their parents for uh, open admissions and enrollment concerns. Thank you po sa nagtanong. Next question, Kai. Next po, pag naipasa na po yung ESC grantee certificate, may iba pa po bang kailangan gawin? Wala na po kasi ang kailangan lang naman doon ay patunay na kayo ay graduate ng isang junior high school na ESC accredited at yung anak ninyo ay kasama doon sa ESC grantee. So, pag nakuha po namin nyo naman, kasama kayo doon sa mga automatic voucher recipients ng Senior High School Voucher Program. Ang kaibahan lang po nun, hindi nyo kailangang maghintay doon sa PEAC website para magbukas. Kasi automatic po kayong uh, recipient. Dalawa lang po ang automatic recipient. Graduate ESC schools at graduate ng public schools. So, pag kayo po ay kasama sa dalawang, dalawang grupo na yan, hindi nyo kailangan hintayin yung online application ng PEAC. PEAC is Private Education Assistance Committee, the one tapped by the government to uh, distribute, to manage the voucher program to qualified students. So, yun po. Kung kasama kayo dun sa ESC grantee or public school, pasa nyo lang po sa amin yung certification na kayo ay ESC grantee automatic i-apply namin yung voucher. Kung kayo ay public school graduate, pasan nyo sa amin yung report niyo, wala nang kailangan certification, alam namin na public school yan, 
bibigay namin sa inyo yung assessment na naibawas na yung value ng voucher. Pero kung hindi kayo kasama sa dalawang grupo na yon, kailangan nyo pong hintayin yung Payak website na mag-open for voucher application. So sana po ay naging malinaw yung aking paliwanag sa voucher system. Next question. Sir, next po. It was mentioned earlier that MCL supports the application for Ivy League schools. Can you please elaborate on that po? Thank you po. Ayan. Ma'am Abby, parang ang sinasabi mo lang kanina dito ay we are we, have, uh, we are we granted with Coursera, tama? Right. And so, Coursera sir, Leo, po, we have a... Sorry. Sige, Sir James. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, sir Leo, we have a partnership with Coursera and um, Coursera is an online uh, course site where different schools, different universities can post their online courses. So, our partnership with Coursera po allows our students to enroll in online courses offered by Ivy League schools. And okay. when they complete the requirement for that course, then they get a certificate from that school. Yeah. Yun po. So, para po, uh, medyo makarelate din tayo. Halimbawa, yung anak nyo po ay kumukuha halimbawa ng electrical engineering sa college. Tapos si teacher, meron siyang nakitang course sa Coursera from the University of Michigan, for example, about power systems na related dun sa course niya. So, bagamat hindi naman po mamemenos yung tuturo ng teacher, pero ito ay pwedeng i-consider ng teacher na supplementary learning material and learning uh, opportunity for the students. So, sasabihin niya sa mga students, o oh, sige, you take that Power Systems course from the University of Michigan by Sera, which is online. At kung sino makakatapos niyan with a good rating, you will be given, what, 10% credit in your final exam. So, may mga ganun pong flexibility. Okay? At the end of the course, yung anak nyo po ay bibigyan ng certificate by Coursera that the he or she was able to finish the course from the University of Michigan. At ito po ay pwedeng isama niya sa kanyang portfolio para po itong lumalabas na executive training o additional training program para dun sa bata. Later on, pag nag-apply siya, pwede niyang gamitin yon na credential or more than the credential. Kahit walang certificate, yung natutunan po nung bata from the experts sa University of Michigan Baon-baon po niya yun hanggang sa siya ay pumasok sa industry. So, yun po ang mga learning opportunities. So, makikita niyo po, sabi ko nga, limitless learning opportunities. So, we are not confining learning in the four walls of the classroom. Local is global. Global is local. So, uh, we also want to globalize the learning experience of our students by providing these opportunities po. So, pero yung tanong na, can you help? Can you elaborate on how MCL supports application to Ivy League schools? Ako po ay acting registrar din at ako po ay nakakakuha ng mga emails from universities abroad and I was uh, surprised that we have senior high school graduates who are now studying in Canada and US. So palagay ko yung po ang pwede namin ibig sabihin sa inyo na report can we give to students who want to go to Ivy League universities? It's the academic preparation. Academic preparation and readiness for our students to face the global environment and also para makasabay doon sa learning environment at saka sa learning uh, style na basically global and international yung flavor. So, yun po. Wala po kaming uh, minus pagdating sa delivery of instruction. So, thank you very much po kay nagtanong, sa nagtanong para kay Sir Leo galing yun. Ayan, so partnership with Coursera is an added value. So ko lang pong i-share, parang two weeks ago, we were figuring out with the office of Ma'am Abby, yung mga licenses natin ng Coursera, ang dami natin mga, ang dami mga tao na sa bahay lang work from home. I-offer kaya natin yan sa alumni. So binuksan namin yan sa alumni, we're happy to, to share with you the news that we have more or less 1,000 graduates of MC who signed up to take courses for free in Coursera and that's sponsored by Malayan Colleges Laguna. And 
Baka yung ibang mga estudyante, pag nasa bahay, gusto matulog, di ba? Yung mga mga workers na work from home, gusto mag-concentrate lang sa trabaho. But these graduates of MCL were very happy that they were what? They, they were able to develop among themselves the habit and attitude of being a lifelong learner. That despite this pandemic, uh, nakakita sila ng opportunity to learn and MCL is there to support them. At ngayon, natitake po sila ng Coursera. May mga nakikita kong post. I thought I was able to take the Six Sigma course from uh, University of Pennsylvania. So may mga ganun. So uh, sayang po yung ganun opportunities. We at MCL, pinoprovide po namin yan. Whenever it is possible, kahit sa alumni, kahit graduates na, kahit tipan, hindi na nagbabayad yan sa amin. That's part of the partnership and the commitment of the institution to start a learning environment that is, sabi nga kanina, short term ba, medium term ba, long term ba. Yan po yung long term. That even after graduation, our communication and collaboration with the alum alumni uh, continue and we want, as part of our student outcomes, we want them to be uh, lifelong learners. Ayan. So, meron pang question, Kai? Yes po, sir. Next question po. In the scholarship program, how to apply and when is the exam? Ayan. Ang sabi ko po kanina, we'll open. Tentative po, ah. Dahil hindi natin alam kung kailan malilip yung modified uh, enhanced community quarantine. Third week or fourth week po ng July. Basta bago magpasukan, tatawagin po namin yung mga applicants para sila ay mag-exam. Eh, sir, late na yun. Ah. Nakapagbayad na kami nun. Kagaya po nung sa payak voucher, kung nakapagbayad na po kayo, pwede namin i-apply yun. So, kung sobra yung binayad nyo, i-rend natin. Kung may balance naman kayo na natira, i-apply natin yung value ng scholarship. Okay po? Pwede bang hintayin ko muna yung scholarship? Pwede naman po. Ang pasukan po natin ay August 17 pa. Third week of July pa naman yung scholarship exam. You may also choose to wait until the third week of July para kung halimbawang masyado kayong kumpiyansa na yung anak ninyo ay makakakuha ng 100% scholarship. edi eh di, eh di wow. Di ba po? So, pwede po yun. Wala pong problema. Ang consequence lang po siguro nun ay kung meron kayong prepared na section, halimbawa senior high school, gusto nyo pang umaga, baka hindi po mangyari yun dahil Ah, uh, nagkaroon tayo ng ano, sabi, dinelay natin yung pag-enroll, hindi tayo nakapili. Ang binibigyan lang po namin ngayon ng option to choose ah, uh, option to choose the scholarship rather the section for senior high school ay yung mga nagbayad na reservation at saka yung mga nag-submit ng reservation uh, pre-enrollment agreement pero hindi nakapagbayad dahil inabot ng lockdown. So yun po, commitment namin bigyan sila ng kanilang preferred slot. Salamat po sa nagtanong. May po tayong may question. Ano po yung topics na i-cover sa exam for scholarship? Kaparehas, yung mga general science, mathematics, English, abstract reasoning. Yung four po na areas na yon for uh, diagnostic exam. Yun din po ang coverage ng scholarship exam. Pag may follow-up question po, alin po sa math, alin po sa science, i-email ko na kaya yung exam. Ayan. So, uh, joke lang. So, yun po ay, yun po yung areas. English, science, math, and uh, abstract reasoning. Update sa senior high that is supposed to graduate. Tayo po ay nasa third term pa lang ng senior high school at college. It will end in July 4. Ang update po dyan na malungkot ay wala na tayong graduation ceremony ngayong July dahil po sa COVID-19. Under the GCQ, kung tayo man po ay magiging GCQ, hindi po pwede ang mass gatherings. So, hindi po tayo pwede mag-graduation. Mag we have 1,900, uh, more, uh, more than 100, but not more than 1,000. Grade 12 graduating students and 700 graduating college students. Wala po kaming venue na pwedeng pagdala niyan maliban sa PICC. At ngayon po, ang PICC ay quarantine facility ng COVID-19. So, raise hand po dito yung gusto mag-graduation sa PICC. Palagay ko po ay wala dahil nga po ay may risk po. At saka yung mismong mass gathering pa lang ay hindi na nire-recommenda ng gobyerno. Eh sir, bakit hindi sa Santa Rosa Sports Complex o sa Binyan? 
Parang yung mga sports complex din po ngayon ay ginagamit na site sa COVID-19 responses. Hindi man quarantine facility, doon binabagsak yung relief goods, doon yung repack, yung mga ganon. Hindi ko po alam, hindi po ko tiyak, pero just the concept of uh, mass gathering is totally, highly discouraged by the government as of the moment. Is shuttle services available? Meron po tayong shuttle service simula pa po nung 2007. Nag-improve po yan. Ngayon may mga dilaw na shuttle service na gumagala at may mga pick-up sa Kalambakan, Lubang, Pasaya de Santa Rosa, Balibago, Binyan, Carmona, San Pedro, Pasita, Muntinupa. Yan po ang mga pick-up points ng ating shuttle that's operational. At present, we're talking to the shuttle service providers. If possible, if they can provide shuttle service that is door-to-door. -door. Ano yung door-to-door, -door, Sir James? Susunduin yung bata sa bahay ninyo. Yung high school concept, elementary. Susunduin sa bahay ninyo, yatin sa school. So, sole after ng klase. So, we're trying to... to uh, Uh, at auxiliary service for the students. Sana po may interesado sa inyo ng ganong service kasi mas safe po yun. And we will be uh, strict in telling the shuttle service providers that uh, we'll be implementing social distancing inside the vans. Hindi pwede yung siksikan na pag 18-seater yung van, 18 din yung capacity, 18 din yung pasasakay nila. Social distancing na po ngayon, We need to implement that to ensure the safe our students. Ang ang uh, epekto lang po niyan, baka mas maging mahal yung cost ng shuttle service kasi lumiit yung seating capacity ng van, tas naging door-to-door -door pa. So we let you know po, once we have the tariff, we have the rates for the service, hindi po namin yan isi-secret. We will share that to the parents because I'm sure many of our parents are very interested about these developments, about uh, these uh, enhancements on auxiliary services to our students. Meron pa po ba tayong tanong, Kai? Sir, last question po. Yes. Are we the one that will choose the schedule after we enroll for college, like morning or afternoon? Pag first, to, pag first year student po, incoming freshman, kami po ang nagbibigay ng section kayo po ay kasi po ay naka-block po pa kayo. So, uh, block section po pagka incoming freshman student. So, ganun din po. June 1, once na napasa nyo na yung requirements, feeling namin, pwede na namin kayong pa-enrollin. Bagamat may mga kulang na requirements, mas maganda ang kompleto. We will send a course message to the students to Blackboard Learn, informing them that they can pay already, and uh, check the assessment of fees. How about an update about the reservation for college enrollment because we already paid? And okay po, secured na po kayo ng slot, pasa lang po kayo ng online requirements. Ang isa pa pong privilege ng mga reserved students, uh, pwede po kayo mag-enroll kung kailan niya gusto. Halimbawa, meron kayong inaasahan na pera sa July, July pa kayo mag-enroll, pwede po. How to apply for academic scholarship? Pakitag dito yung ating guidelines specifically for scholarship para familiar si Andrea about the procedure for scholarship. Kita nyo po, walang, wala namang na menos, halos di lang tayo magkakasama sa isang room. Pero yung tanong ninyo dito, nababasa ko, nakaka-capture, nasasagot ko, nagtataas kayo ng kamay, pwede. That's the power of information technology. And as I mentioned, that has been available, uh, available for the, in the uh, education sector since uh, 1997, 1998, or even earlier for some schools and universities. Pero hindi po ito nag-process hindi natin binigyan ng chance. So hopefully, we can give online learning a chance this time. We have presented the capability of the school to deliver online learning, ngayon po yun po ang request natin na sana po mabigyan natin ng chance at tayo po ay supportahan natin ito dahil ito po ay ang new normal sa education ngayon. So, uh, yun na po yata yung last question. Ang utang sa inyo ay ang recording nitong ating proceedings which we are sharing through our YouTube channel and we send to the participants kaya po kayo nag-register. 
Uh, yung mga previous sessions po, you can also check in our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Uh, thank you very much po for joining. This has been a very meaningful and uh, uh, collaborative uh, discussion and engagement with our parents and new students. Thank you very much, Ma'am Abby, for joining us in session and giving us a walkthrough of Blackboard Learn. My now, pleasure, sir. Uh, thank you, Mo. Now it's the time for us to uh, have our lunch. Baka may mga na sunog na ng tilapia, kakapakinig kay Sir James. On behalf of our president, Dr. Reynaldo Vivea, is also the president of Mapua University, our administrators, faculty members, employees, students, kami po ay umaasa na tayo po ay ligtas at malusog sa gitna ng pandemya na ito. At sana po ay mag-join uli kayo sa iba pang mga sessions ng Viewpoints. Kung meron po kayong request na topic na gusto nyo pong uh, advance, masabi sa amin para makadevelop kami na ang uh, viewpoint session para doon, kami po ay open sa ganong suggestion. Thank you very much po. Uh, ginamit po natin ngayon ng Blackboard Collaborate. Nakita nyo po kung ano po yung mga platforms that, uh, gina that we are using for the delivery of instruction to ensure that collaboration and engagement will be prioritized in as part of the flexible learning options under the new normal. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat at maraming salamat. Maraming salamat din po sa team for the support provided for the Viewpoints online session. Thank you po.